Thank you for tuning into the Milk and Cookies podcast. This has absolutely nothing to do with milk and cookies. It has everything to do with the American football. So, as we already know, this video was posted exactly one week after the Super Bowl happened. Chiefs, the Bucks. we already know what happened. The Bucks absolutely destroyed the Chiefs, and there's no other way around it. I mean, you could look into it. You could say, well, you know, the Chiefs had a shot. It was two super stellar offenses going against two pretty above average defenses. But at the end of the day, I mean, the Bucks defense ultimately controlled the show. Winfield was shutting down Tyreek. Kelsey was not catching a single thing. And I mean, Hardman and Watkins just couldn't do anything as well. The Bucks, they, they stopped the Chiefs. There's no other way to put it. The Chiefs were coming off of, what was it, 14 and two? That was their record at the end. Yeah, 14 and two. I mean, they looked unstoppable. And then you go into the Super Bowl, the biggest spectacle game of the entire year. I mean, what do you do? Nine points, really? That's it? This was supposed to be, Tony Romo said that this was the most spectacular, biggest anticipated Super Bowl of, of, of this, this, this decade. And there was nothing. So, I mean, I don't know, Anthony, give me, give me the breakdown of the Bucks. I mean, we already know what we saw there. So going into it, it's offseason time. So what's the future of the Bucks look like for the rest of the offseason? Honestly, what I see with the Bucks going on right now, I see our key free agents we have to re-sign is Chris Godwin, Shaq Barrett, and Levante David. I feel – I feel like Shaq Barrett, he said just this past week, he said he want, he feels like it's time for him to break the bank and he wants that big deal that he wants. He wants to be making like 18 to $20 million. And the Bucks, though, on the other hand, we have to re-sign Godwin and re-sign Levante David because Levante David, he's going to be a free agent at the end of the year. And while everyone wants to bring back the big three, which is Levante David, Shaq Barrett, and Chris Godwin, I feel like it would be important for us to re-sign Shaq Barrett to a couple-year deal, maybe a four-year deal worth $18 million, and restructure some of Evans, Marpets, and a couple other of our players' deals because Evans already came out and said he would want to restructure his deal to keep this team together because he feels like this is a championship team right here, and what he's what he sees in Tampa could be a long-lasting future, and I know it's only the off season, but I feel like I believe in Jason Light and Bruce Arians to get this done, and I see I see the big three coming back. That's just no. what I that's what I think, and I believe that this is this team could win another Super Bowl, and they can possibly go back to back. Now, I'd say the biggest thing right now with the Bucks is a lot of people are saying that this is sort of like a win, a win and done team. You know, they, they pump all the money into like two, three seasons, and then they're going to be bad for the next half a decade, for five years. Do you see do you see that happening to the Bucks with the current stasis? I mean, you got future Hall of Famer Tom Brady on a – he's got one year left on his deal, $25 million. I mean, do you see do you see him continuing on, or do you think this is it after two more years? Well, I see with Tom Brady, I see Brady playing – to like 47, 48, or Brady came out and said the other day he's going to play until he is not good anymore. And I still think Tom Brady has enough gas left in the tank to win a couple more Super Bowls. I know the fans don't want to see it, but Tom Brady, hands down, is the greatest player of all time. I feel him like he's going to be playing to 46, 47, 48 even, and maybe he'll win two more Super Bowls. You just never know. And I feel like Tampa – we got such a young core of a team. I feel like we're going to be good for a very long time. I don't see Tampa being like a one and done team or a two and done team. You got to look in in depth and we have such a young core of the future that I feel like these next couple of years, we're going to be the top of the top, the best of the division. That's just what I think, but who knows what's going to happen. That's why you yeah. play the game. I mean, as we'll as we'll talk about later in the later on in the future episodes, we'll definitely go into further detail of the Bucks off season. But but right now, uh, Leon, do you want to take the Chiefs? Uh, what's the future for the Chiefs look like? Oh man, the Chiefs' future is great. They're only losing about they have eight free agents going into the free agency. So just think about that. Their whole team is coming back with the free agents they're looking to keep or make walk. Sammy Watkins, Marcus Robson. You lose those guys, you're not missing a lot. They're looking to bring back Ladavion Bell, but they don't even need to bring him back with the emergence of the rookie. And uh, also um, Williams, I forgot his first name, but he's a dog, number 31. He's yeah, Damian him. Williams, the, the former Dolphin? No, uh, the other one. He, oh, he the other one? 
Damian Williams is coming back next year, so they don't know if they want to keep uh, uh, LaDavion Bell coming mm-hmm. because Damian, he opted out this season. So imagine him coming back. That would be – that'll also, be – That'll be a dynamic duo right there. Another they have thing. some nice line to sign, too. And mm-hmm. uh, Austin Reader, you know, mm-hmm. they can get him back. She's another thing. Like, yeah. Another thing I'd like to touch, touch base on about the Super Bowl is mm-hmm. you had those two weeks to prepare for this big game. And, you know, Tampa was playing in their hometown. I didn't – out of the beginning of the season, I wasn't expecting Tampa to go 12-4, and 13-3, and three, or 14-2, and two, or 15-1, and one, or 16-0. and up. You, you, were, you knew there was going to be ups and downs of the season. And when that week in November, when we lost three – we had that losing record when we won one game and lost three. And then we were struggling for a bit. But after that bye week, the Bucks really got it together because we went 8-0 and oh in those games. We were scoring points. We were connecting with players. You saw there was a growth development from Brady to Evans to Godwin, even to Scotty Miller, I believe, like, touching base on the Super Bowl, Todd Bowles, and Todd Bowles, he really changed his team around, and Byron Leftwich. The defense was making better plays. You remember in the Green Bay game when we won 38-10? to 10? We blitzed their team the whole entire time. Everyone thought, oh, Tampa was going to be one and done in the playoffs. No, we went on to win the Super Bowl because they were they wanted it be- badly before any other team. I believe Todd Bowles and Byron Leftwich deserve to be like, in my opinion, they should have been coach of the year because they turned this team around. And I believe that they prepared well for this game and they changed a hundred percent from what they what we saw in the Chiefs to the Super Bowl now. I mean, as a Dolphins fan, I, I can go completely against who deserved uh, Coach of the Year, but that's that's for another time. I don't want to get into that because I can argue about that for like 15, 20 minutes alone. So, I mean, before the Super Bowl even happened, let's go let's go further back. The the Stafford Goff trade, as most of us know already, the St. Louis no, they're not St. Louis anymore. They're L.A. now. L.A. Rams sent Jared Goff along with a a a draft like a ton of draft picks over two to, first rounders and a third round. Yes. Two first rounders and a third rounder, two separate year first rounders of one in next year and the following year, the 2022, yeah. 2023. Yeah. And a third rounder for Matthew Stafford. So, I mean, the biggest thing is this, you sign off away a quarterback that was rather young to the lions, which as most of us know, the lions are notorious for just killing careers. There's no way around it. I mean, they killed Sanders, they killed Johnson and they kind of killed Stafford's. So it's it's a matter of this, you know, I mean, <clears throat> excuse me, and the Rams, all they got was Matthew Stafford. There's two questions from this. Are the Rams contenders now for the Super Bowl or even just a deep playoff run with Stafford? And two, is Goss ruin, is Goss career ruined by going to the Lions? Now, my thing is, before we get into, into more finer details, uh, the Lions definitely won that trade. They got a younger quarterback. They got a buttload of picks. But, I mean, Leon, what, what do you think about this whole trade? Alex, absolutely not. Uh, both teams won from that trade. Even though the Lions are rebuilding, I think golf comes back even stronger, even better. Uh, Stafford is put in a position to go to the NFC Championship now. Rams defense is stellar. Their backfield is nice. Cam Akers, Henderson in the back. Their run game was, what, top 10? Man, About, Stafford, yeah. watch out for the Rams. So, oh, so you, that, you, think, you, think the Rams, you think the Rams won the trade? Yes, they won the trade. Wow, both teams okay. Have, both wow. teams had victories in the trade. I like the Lions, how they're going to bounce back, too. All right, yeah. Hmm, I didn't think about that. All right, Anthony. What I, didn't you know, I, I didn't <laughs> think about that. That's a good point, Leon, that you have. But me personally, I think the Lions won this trade because you have Jared Goff. He is a younger quarterback. He's been in the league for a couple years. I feel like the environment that he was in, in the with the Rams and their coaching staff and the players that he was surrounded by, I don't think that was a good environment for him. So going to Detroit, going to a team with a new head coach, and you have the, your future ahead of you with two first round, two first round picks, a third round pick, you're going to be able to build your future around Jared Goff, and this is Jared Goff era with Detroit now, and I believe that Jared Goff will. This year, even though there's a first head coach, first year head coach, 
I believe Jared Goff might take the Lions to the playoffs, but it's just – it's just the first year with him, a new head coach. So it's going to be a lot of ups and downs. You have Jared Goff. And then I believe in the draft that the Lions are going to be taking receiver, defensive line, run game support. You, They need to rebuild and give all Jared Goff offensive weapons. I mean, I mean, certainly, I think the Lions are going to be set up for the future. I mean, I don't think that they're going to be – they're currently – they've been in the rebuilding stage for God knows how many amount of years. I don't think they're going to be an instant playoff, I think, maybe next year, um, maybe the year after that. But, I mean, as long as you're not an NFC North fan or any of those other three teams, I mean, I think everybody is low-key a fan of the Lions. They want them to succeed. They haven't yeah. – they've never been to the Super Bowl. And they've, they've, they've had so many good Hall of Famers. And Calvin Johnson just got inducted into the Hall of Fame. All right, so going on to that topic, the next and the probably the biggest topic of this entire offseason is, is Deshaun Watson. Deshaun Watson, he's been with Houston for four years now. I mean, they just signed him to a four years super contract, or I think it was close to 88 million, more or less around that. Probably a lot more. No, no, it was a lot more. It was like 130 something mil. Uh, so, my next question is this regardless of draft capital, throw draft capital out of this. Team can have all the picks, no picks. What team is the greatest or not the greatest but what what team do you think Deshaun Watson could go to personally before I let you two take it I think the 49ers are the perfect spot for Deshaun Watson it's out of conference Houston doesn't have to worry about Watson for probably like another year or two before they have to play each other San Francisco remember, remember two years ago San Francisco went 13 and three after going two two three wins the previous season getting Joey uh, Nick Bosa and then transitioning right into the Super Bowl 13 and three and they lose the Super Bowl against the Chiefs Translate to to this year, mediocre season. Garoppolo's injured. Half the team is injured, just like a couple of years ago. The 49ers are probably one of the better built teams that are looking for a quarterback. Garoppolo's not the future. There's no way around it. That man, he's I don't know. There's just something about him that just doesn't scream future quarterback to me. I mean, he's 27, 28. He's kind of in the middle of his prime. So this is if this is what he's capable of with injuries, I don't think it is. You put Watson in there. You got Samuel. You got um, oh my gosh, who's the other receiver in there? Um, Ayuk, Brandon Ayuk. The defense is super stellar. I mean, Fred Warner, Joey Bosa, Richard Sherman. Even though he's getting older, is still a superstar in my opinion. I mean, that defense is loaded. The offense is loaded. The line is great. I think Deshaun Watson goes to goes to San Francisco, and the team can stay healthy. That's a deep playoff run right there. So, all right, who wants to? Uh, I mean, what do you guys think? Where do you think Watson's going to go? I, me personally, I think Deshaun Watson, he could land with either the Jets, possibly the Patriots, because Patriots, what do you see them doing with their quarterback in this future? Yeah, you, if you've been reading some mock drafts, it's said uh, they're going to either take some, maybe take Justin Fields if he falls that far, or they might take Trey Lance out of North Dakota State University, who's only a sophomore. But if Deshaun Watson goes to the Patriots, I feel like that's another rebuilding stage that the Patriots have to go through because you have Deshaun Watson and he's in a whole new team, a whole new system. And you're with Bill Belichick who just had his first losing season in a matter of months. And you're going to need to read, you're going to need to drop some weapons for him, some receiver help, some running back help, some offensive line help even too, to protect Deshaun Watson there. Because if you want to make a deep run in the playoffs, you need the protection for Deshaun Watson, but that's only if he's going to the Patriots. But Deshaun Watson might end up with the Jets, which I don't know why he would want to go to New York because the Jets went two and fourteen this year, and they lost. They played themselves out of the first pick in this year's draft because I feel like if the Jets got the first pick in the draft, they would have obviously clear as day taken Trevor Lawrence. But the I feel like the Jets, the Patriots. Denver or Carolina is the best landing spots for Deshaun Watson to hopefully rebuild any of those teams and have a winning future. But that's just my opinion. Hey, I like your opinion on that, uh, about the Patriots. Uh, I feel like he would fit perfectly with the Patriots because Josh McDaniels as the offensive coordinator with a guy like Deshaun Watson, man, the Patriots were always right there this year. Not saying Cam Newton isn't the guy for the team, but with a guy like Watson, the Patriots probably would have been in the AFC Championship this year. I hate to say it as a Dolphins fan, but yeah. I hope Watson doesn't go to the Patriots. Yeah, Jets, so. get him. I mean, 
think about it like this. If Watson ends up with the Patriots, do you see the Patriots making a postseason run? Or no. do you see them being mediocre and going no. possibly eight and eight or no. ten and eight? I think they'll be. I think the Patriots will be right around where they were this year. I don't. I, I don't. The quarterback is not what they need to just fix the entire team. But then again, I mean, the the defense had a buttload of opt outs because of twenty twenty. I mean, they lost three defensive stars. So I mean, for all I know, they could make another deep run. I mean, they are one quarterback away, maybe. But I mean, at the other same time, I think they just also need to establish a receiving board. You can't rely on Julian Edelman to catch. You know multiple passes a game. I mean, you just double cover him and what? You can't, you can't rely on Nikhil Harry or anybody else. I mean, there, there's no one left on the team. But um, so, I mean, let's transition away. Let's go to another quarterback, less talked about, but just as equally important. Uh, Carson Wentz of the Eagles. He, ha- he was drafted second overall right behind Goff in the 2016 draft, 2016, 2017, 2016. Yeah. yeah. 2016 yeah. draft. Uh, so, I mean, the biggest thing is this. I mean, as we already know, the Eagles took with the second overall – or there's a second-round pick last year. They took Jalen Hurts, who eventually took the starting job away from Wentz. Wentz has voiced his displeasure with the team and says that he doesn't want to play if he can't start. So, um, what's the future for Carson Wentz? I mean, we already know the Eagles are asking for two first-round picks, and any team that they've called about it has simply hung up on it. Nobody's willing to give away two first-round picks for a quarterback that went to the playoffs once. And let alone remember, he was injured. Nick Foles had to carry that team and end up playing the Super Bowl, not Wentz. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I think if anybody is going to take him, the number one team that needs a quarterback that can afford Wentz, per se, I think would be the Colts. Uh, I think that would be I, – I wouldn't say that's the best team, but I think that's the most likely team to take Wentz. But then again, he's, he's not worth two first-round picks. I wouldn't even say he's worth one first-round pick. If anything, I'd say give him give – him, Give him a second rounder, give him a third rounder, and then like a sixth or seventh of this year, next year combined of equal. I mean, then I think that would be worth trade. But I think I think the Colts are the next spot for for um, Wentz. Leon? Yeah, I think the Colts too, man, because who wants to get a guy like Wentz on their team? Not trying to bash you, Wentz. I'm just saying you got to show me. Yeah. Yeah, well, I here's my thing, though. What if, yeah, the Colts need a quarterback, but – my feet, I think the Colts also could make a trade for Marcus Mariota also. That's another quarterback that could be on the move this year because the Raiders have said they are looking into trading a quarterback this offseason, and that went to Derek Carr or um, Marcus Mariota. And they just came out and said Derek Carr will not be traded and Marcus Mariota will most likely be moved this offseason. So another thing you have to look out for is where – could you see a Marcus Mariota for to the Indianapolis Colts for picks, money, or a player, et cetera? Or could you see Carson Wentz in Indy? Or I could see Carson Wentz possibly ending up with the Bears because the Bear there was a pick that I saw saying a draft uh, rumor I saw saying Wentz to the Bears for picks, and I saw Trubisky, Tariq Cohen. And a couple other picks going to the Eagles to build around the Eagles. But I don't know if that would be a good fit for Carson Wentz because Carson Wentz in Chicago with a whole new team again. Or if Carson Wentz goes to Indianapolis, the Colts, where he can reconnect and work with Frank Reich again with the Colts. And you have a good team around the Colts. You have Marlon Mack, you have Michael Pittman. You have so many other receivers there too. Do you do you think they're a quarterback away from making a deep playoff run? I think I think I think they are. I just don't think Wentz is the quarterback to send him deep into the playoffs. Uh, I mean, you already saw Philip Rivers signed a, a two-year deal and only exercised one, and they went eleven and five instantly off of a seven and nine season with Jacoby Brissett. So. I think I think this. They're either going to shop around in free agency for a quarterback, or they're going to try and trade him. Because Jacoby, if they want mediocrity, they'll keep Brissett, and that's it. it Brissett, remember, he was in the same he was in the same uh, not draft class, but the same level as Garoppolo, and then the Patriots traded away Garoppolo and Brissett. Mm-hmm. So I just I don't think Brissett's the answer. All right. So last thing we'll talk about today. Um, I think this is probably the biggest thing for Saints and Eagles fans is the enormous amount of cap space that they are over by. So as we know, the Saints went to the playoffs. They did pretty decent, you know, no big deal. Um, 
Breeze, I'm pretty sure Breeze is done. He looked like he's going to retire. 100 percent that Breeze. I think is he's done. done. So here's Breeze the thing: the, the Saints are currently sitting at an amazing 74 million dollars over the cap, and the Eagles are close behind with I think it was about 70 million. And remember, the Eagles still went four, eleven, and one. The Saints they did better, eleven and five, twelve and four ish. So this is this is the question: is is what's I mean, <laughs> no offense, but the Eagles are going to be pretty bad for the next couple of years. I mean, you're going to have to scrap away almost every decent player on that team just to erase the cap space. The Saints, I think they have a little bit easier time. I mean, their 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 team is kind of, kind of loaded. It's just a matter of restructuring and getting rid of. So, but here's the thing: they're out of quarterback. That's it. The Saints, they're they, they're they're done with the quarterback. They're not going to use any any picks to try to get a quarterback. You know, they're not going to trade for Carson Wentz. They're not going to try and get Watson because those are two heavy cap hits. So, uh, I know one thing that is discussed, and I know Leon said this. Um, off camera was that uh, Winston might be the starter for the Saints. And honestly, I think that's the most likely thing. Uh, Leon, you want to go a little bit more into that? Yeah, Winston will be the starter. Oh, he will. will. Okay. He's going to yeah. come in there and do his little packages, but Winston will be starting next year. And I believe Winston will surprise a lot of folks, even his Bucks fans from the past. Now, here's the thing. So, I mean, the Saints just came off of a, of a deep playoff run. I mean, they went to the division and they lost to the Bucks. So, obviously, I think we were all safe to say that the Saints will not reach that level this coming year. Do, how, what, what do you predict of the Saints this year alone with Winston and having to get rid of some of the other players to kind of reach cap? I actually do predict a wild card, and that's about okay. it. Their defense okay. is still going to be loaded. They're still going to have the weapons. They're going to mm-hmm. run the ball a lot with uh, Alvin Kamara. So don't count them out yet. Okay. Now, Anthony, uh, I'll let you handle the Eagles right now. So the Eagles just came off of 4-11-1, and and one, possibly one of the worst records you could do. And with the amount of cap space that they're hitting, what, what do they need to do to look like they're going to go in the right direction right now? If you want to go in the right direction as an Eagles fan or just being a part of the Eagles, you need to look out what went wrong for you this year. Like, obviously, your quarterback situation, it's either Carson Wentz or Jalen Hurts. And Jalen Hurts is only into his second year. But Jalen Hurts did start a couple games for the Eagles because whatever happened with Carson Wentz, I forgot what happened, but Carson Wentz, he wasn't having a good year. He was having an up and down roller coaster year, like how typically some of his years are. But I think Jalen Hurts is the answer in Philly. I feel like he can lead this team into being something that's good. But you also need to look at receiver help. You need to look at running back help indefinitely because if you want to build a good team, you got to have good players. And on the defensive side, you got to you have to take the ball away from the offense like it's easier said than done but i feel like if the eagles want to have a winning season it's going to take a lot of work but you're going to need to restructure this team maybe that means trade away some key players or sign some in free agency but maybe it was just the coaching like the environment around that that the co- players didn't like or players didn't like how the coaches caught, taught or coached or you never know what the real reason is behind that. But I feel like the Eagles will, I feel like the Eagles might have a better season this year, but it's going to be a big rebuilding season for them. And it's going to be like that for a couple of years now. Do I expect them to go make the playoffs this year? No. Do I expect them to get a couple more wins this year? Yes, I could see them possibly going to a six and ten or a seven and nine, but I don't doubt. I don't see them making the playoffs or making a deep playoff run. But I would also like to touch base on that the Saints topic. Y'all, y'all think oh Jameis is the answer? What about Taysom Hill? Taysom no. Hill, he's no. been with the team. No, no, absolutely not. That man is not a quarterback. Taysom that Hill has been. A... Let, let, Taysom Hill's been with the team for more than six years. He's learned behind Breeze. You've seen him in games. I know he's up there in age, but if you give him the season to start, I could see this Taysom Hill being the quarterback of the Saints for a while. He's always been in that backup role. And Winston, last when he was with the Bucks, 
He threw 103 interceptions in 63 games. Don't and the only reason people liked him is because he passed for a lot of yards. But he went 30 for 30 last year, and I don't want, I wouldn't want a franchise quarterback to have 30 interceptions and 30 touchdowns in the same year. He makes bad decisions with the football, and his high interception ratings have gone skyrocketing up the roof. Yeah, he had that one pass play in the Buck Saints game, but that was it. You didn't really see much of Jameis Winston this year. It was mainly Drew Brees and Taysom Hill. I mean, I think the other thing right now is also to touch base on this. There's also no disrespect to Taysom Hill. He's a great player, but that man is not a quarterback. That man is a is a wildcat formation, running back, tight end, wide receiver. He's he's He is a special case that he can play any position, but playing him too long a quarterback just is not that appealing to me. I mean, plus his, his cap hit is more than Jameis Winston. You're going to need to look at people that are going to produce as well as cheap. James Winston is on a very, very cheap deal, and he is a quarterback. And, hey, you never know, man. The guy had LASIK eye surgery. You know, he might start <laughs> throwing things left and right, you know, right? But um, I know – I remember he was in there for the Saints this year on one drive, and I think he went 6-10 of 10 for, like, a couple passing yards. But those are short little danky passes. Those are easy slant route passes. I'm I mean, talking about – probably threw it to Michael Thomas. That's why it was a slant route. But, you know, that's another reason. So, But, yeah. Do you, <laughs> I mean, we'll see. There's that's, that's you, you never know what's gonna around. happen. The Saints might surprise you, or yeah. you never know. Yeah, I mean, so all right, so uh, we're gonna start wrapping up this episode a little bit. Uh, so we're gonna go into this episode's absolutely crazy, stupid, amazing prediction. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna give a prediction that we firmly believe we being individual or the group of us. And then we're just going to leave it to you guys to interpret it. Either call us geniuses or stupid. I'll go first. I think the Saints are going to be completely bad. I think they're going to have a top five pick next next draft. And if anybody wants to attack me, then attack me. I'm not scared of you. So, yeah, that's fine. Uh, next, Leon, you got one? Yeah, crazy picks for me. I got Jameis Winston starting for the Saints, and I got Jameis winning the playoff game next year. Crazy. Wow. Okay. Wow. That's... <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> Anthony, my, got one. my crazy, stupid prediction, Dwayne Haskins will start four games for the Pittsburgh Steelers next year. Oh I God. see Dwayne Haskins being in the Steelers, in the right environment, and learning behind Big Ben because Roethlisberger, yeah, he's a good quarterback, but he, had, he was injured this year. Mm-hmm. I see Haskins learning behind Big Ben, and maybe he'll start four games or maybe even more games. You never know, but – you gotta I, mean, I guess that's why we call it crazy, stupid predictions, because it is crazy, stupid, and utter madness. So, all right. I think that's going to do it for our first episode. I want to thank all you guys that stuck around for the amazing – how long? A uh, long time so far. So, appreciate you guys sticking around. Uh, if you liked our content, go ahead and leave a like. Leave us a comment if we missed something or if there's something that you don't disagree with or agree with us on. Let us know if there's anything you want us to address in the next episode. We will definitely be looking at all the comments. Um, if you liked our content, give us a subscribe. You know, we'll definitely enjoy that. And we will definitely love to keep giving you guys everything we can. So thank you so much. Thank you for tuning in. And we will see y'all real soon.